Hi there everyone and welcome to week five. And once again, my trusty assistant, little Fritz, hello, is going to show off this week his femur. That's that bone here. And that's this week's exercise, drawing of the femur. So, let's see what we've got. Last week, which was the fourth week, you all had completed this pelvis, which I described as two butterfly shapes. You can see through this large gap here in the middle to the sternum. That's at the base of the spine. That's this bone here, known as the tailbone. Okay. That's right down at the bottom of your spine. Now, those of you who drew the pelvis just as a solid object, I'd like you to look at this again because you can see that it's actually got a lot of curves in it and holes. The main one here, this big one, and then these two holes here at the bottom bit. Okay, so you're wanting to get that as part of it. Now, the uh, thigh bones, better known as the femur, are going to be connecting into the pelvis by the hip joint here, okay? Now that's one of the things when you've heard of hip replacements that they replace this ball part here and I think part of this bone uh, because it's, it's worn out and they create something with uh, metal titanium or sometimes I think um, some sort of ceramic as well they use for it. So that's what's a, a hip joint. So this is your hip bone going into the hip and it's about the largest and one of the strongest bones here, the femur. Um, you know, even if it breaks, a femur only takes about six weeks to heal. So despite its size, and it is a big important bone, it heals by itself fairly quickly. And here we have the look. I always think, if you can look at that, that the top of it looks like a, a head of someone. He's leaning his head down, or oh, she's leaning her head down, and there's the shoulder here, you know, there's the neck and there's the side of the head. And it's, I always think of it as like a long body, like a sculpture. Yes. For me, I mean, no doctor or um, anatomist, you know, would talk like this, but I am an artist. So I'm always looking for shapes and meaning in things. I think that's the purpose of art. You know, we're always looking for shapes and meaning in this life. It's different from people who learn about life from textbooks. We learn about life from life and exploring. So it's a different thing. So with this, we'll set Fritz down again. Here's the image that you will have. I trust all of you have got that envelope. And this is what was sent to you um, the fifth week. And it's going to be this bone, just this bone. It's fairly simple. I never ask you for too much and it should always be very easily done within a week and submitted to me. Email me or text. And you all have my phone number for sending the texts. So... Let me just see here. So I'm feeling my way in. Can you all see here? I'll move it closer. There we are. So like I said, I'm almost thinking of this as that thing I described, the person leaning in. There's the head. It's got a kind of hunchback, this guy. <laughs> Yeah.
Now I'm making this pretty big. I'm probably going to run out of room to fit it in the whole of the uh, paper here, but you'll get an impression. So that's, I've been working on that for 15 seconds. Down like that. And it's not a straight bone, you know, it's got a slight curving kind of thing in it, which you can put down with the shading. Uh, okay. So I'm just doing this directly from the drawings that I've sent you. And you're always welcome to use something that you might have found on a Google or something else. Now there's the bottom of the bone. Which I'm just loosely doing in. So I've been at this for one minute. That's why I always say you've no real excuses not to do this stuff every week. Because if that's all it takes to do this one minute out of a whole week, it's not that much. Slight curve, slight curve there. Now I've made it a lot shorter than it is in reality to fit into this paper. Yep. Now I know some of you will do this even better than me. You've got the time. I don't want to dwell on this for hours, just to give you the sense of what it is. And if this is all you want to do, that's fine. You know, you can do it pretty quickly. Send it in. Let me see the actual bone from Fritz. There he is. Mm -hmm. Kneecap, that's what I was missing out on there. Just while I'm at it just now, I got an inquiry this week about a student who was interested in the term cross-hatching. We don't use it for this. It's more of a kind of graphic medium, cross-hatching. What does cross-hatching mean? It means that here where I was doing these shadows, you can see that when I did it, I just did it smooth like that, you know, very kind of naturalistic shadows just by using tone. Now, if you can see this thing I'm doing here, I'll do the same bone shape. There he is, he's more of a, he's more of a man bent over now. You can, <laughs> there's the shoulders, there's the head. That would be his nose. So cross hatching would be, instead of doing the shadowing the way I did it, you do it with lines. Lines that are going vertical and horizontal. So these are the horizontal lines. And then to make it darker, you put the vertical lines straight. So it gives a different feeling to the thing. Now, when you want it to go lighter, you just put less of the lines together like that. So it just gets lighter, but it's okay. I don't use it very often. It's more of a kind of mechanical way of drawing, you know, with lines like that. So basically cross hatching, I'll use this thicker pencil, which I use for demonstrations because it's easier to see. So it's basically just lines that are going that way. These are kind of horizontal and then lines that are going vertical that way. There's nothing very complicated to tell you about it other than it's up to you how you use it. You know, you go like that, you go like that. 
It's not a method I use for shading. I prefer naturalistic shading like I've done here. It's, it's easier, it's quicker and it looks better, but some people do like this, you know, and it gives a different feeling, you know, it's, it's not bad, you know, it's up to, every artist is different. Every artist, she or he, has a different way of approaching it and that's what makes it art. If it was all the same, it would just be like photography, but because it's different, it's like you. That's what the beauty of it is. Art is an exploration of you. So here we go. It's cross-hatching. That's one thing about it. So do this. Take your camera. Make a photograph of it. Send it to me uh, by next week. Uh, I'm not, it'll be sometime in October. I'm not sure exactly. Sometime. October the... Uh, Mine's gone. Hang on. He returns with his calendar. Yes, it looks like it'll be uh, October the 4th. That would be Monday, October the 4th. So send that in to me. And if any of you have bought the um, Hostos art box from Blick and there was any item missing, please let me know. Also contact Blick. One student didn't get the paper palette, nor did he get a tube of white paint. And he contacted Blick and they are shipping those missing items to him because you need white paint and you need the paper palette. So if you are buying that Hostess art box, because we're going to be doing painting later on, uh, do check it to make sure that all the materials are in it. Okay, that's it for this week, week five. Deadline to send in the completed drawing photograph or text to me and of course that counts as your attendance is uh, yo October the 4th that's us bye for now take care